Hey, 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 it's me, Tiffany. Welcome to my channel where I show all things pregnancy, postpartum, and motherhood related. I'm a certified birth and postpartum doula, so that means I support women and their families on their journey from conception to postpartum. If you have not had a chance yet, please check out my website at www.nurturebytiff.com where you can check out my doula services, you can check out my childbirth education courses, and you can check out my merch. Um, so I'm a little late on this story, and I heard about it, but then... I didn't really know what was going on. I saw a story, it popped up, and it was talking about track star Tori Bowie um, had passed away. And come to find out, after her autopsy results, the reason why. And I'll share the story with you and then come back and we'll you talk about it. During the pandemic, before returning closer to pre-pandemic levels and preliminary data for 2022, but specialists tell us the biggest problems include access to affordable, high-quality care during pregnancy and especially postpartum. This morning, alarmingly high maternal mortality rates. A new report from the CDC showing a 40% spike in 2021 with more women dying during pregnancy or within a year after giving birth. The U.S. has one of the worst maternal mortality rates among industrialized wealthy countries. Why do you think that is? We know that many women don't have access to the preventive and emergency care that they need uh, during pregnancy and after pregnancy. And part of that is that many you know, women don't have the extended coverage that they need uh, for postpartum care. And another new report looking at over 1,000 pregnancy-related deaths in 36 states from 2016 to 2019, finding that 84% were preventable. Black women are three to four times more likely to die from a pregnancy-related cause than white women. We see that there are long-standing structural issues and barriers that have prevented um, black women and women of color more broadly from getting the kind of care that they need. We're not aiming to just walk out alive as, right? as you know, yeah. as the goal here. That's the baseline. Emily Rodriguez is a doula and founder of Ashe Birthing Services in New York. I wish that when people became pregnant, their provider would say, where would you like to give birth? You're a low risk person. So if you're high risk, I would say let's birth in the hospital. That's what I would like to see. And all the low risk people birth outside of the mm. hospital or in the hospital with midwives. Experts say that anyone planning a birth outside of a hospital or birthing center should have certified midwives attending and have access to a hospital if a medical emergency arises. Rodriguez is Dr. Carla Williams's doula. After having a negative birthing experience in the hospital, Williams, a practicing obstetrician, hired a midwife and doula and had home births with her second and third children, joining the less than 1% of women who birth at home, which carries its own set of risks. I was told by the doctor that, you know, the clock was ticking and that it was going to be time to have a C-section if I didn't continue to dilate um, and if I didn't deliver soon. I asked for more time, you know, it's funny to say that to, you know, ask for permission. 2020 data across the U.S. shows about one in five to one in three women undergoing C-sections to give birth and an epidural rate hovering near 80 percent. There's been concern about how high the cesarean section rates have been uh, in this country. And look, we want to apply care where it's appropriate. And I think we have seen circumstances where sometimes women aren't offered the full set of options or aren't given the full information they need to help make uh, the best decision for themselves. So after your two home births, how did that impact how you moved forward as a provider yourself? The biggest thing I feel is just talking to the patients, really explaining things, giving uh, true informed consent and, and allowing them to be autonomous and focusing on the postpartum period and what's necessary to keep a mother healthy, you know, in that crucial time after birth. And recent CDC data showing just how crucial postpartum care is, finding half of maternal deaths happened one week to one year after giving birth. And while about one in four of those deaths were from hemorrhage or cardiac conditions, nearly the same amount, one in four were from men. So that was the story. And it's a common thing. Just like what I talked about in my um, video that I did talking about postpartum depression, um, Pregnancy complications, postpartum complications, very common, especially amongst black women. I'm just going to put it out there. We are four times more likely to die, you know what I'm saying, during and after childbirth. Let's just put it out there. There are health care disparities. There are, you know, discrimination in health care. I mean, it's, I'm just being honest. It, I'm just being honest, and it's 100% true. 
she was, from my understanding, eight months pregnant. Um, she was at home. She was in labor. And she passed away from complications of preeclampsia and also respiratory issues. During my first pregnancy, um, back in 2003, I was diagnosed with preeclampsia, okay? And preeclampsia, for those of you who do not know, is when you have high blood pressure during your pregnancy, okay? Having high blood pressure during your pregnancy can lead to several complications, including death, okay? Um, if you don't have a provider who is doing what they're supposed to do, this could go left very quickly very very easily sometimes they have to make a decision on whether or not they're going to induce you know labor you have you may have to end up having to have a c-section you know early just because if your blood pressure spikes to a certain level it's dangerous for you and for your baby and sometimes you know ending the pregnancy not in the way of you know you know taking a life but cutting the pregnancy short I guess I should say at like 36 37 weeks somewhere in there sometimes you may they may end up having to make that decision because it may be um, better for both the mother and the baby so I don't really know you know if she was on any kind of like blood pressure medication or anything like that to help with this um, she was an athlete so I know that her her eating habits and you know things like that I'm assuming were up to par um, but you know, I don't really know what her healthcare provider was like and what their plan was. You, you're supposed to develop a plan with your patient to make sure that you're able to keep the blood pressure and everything like that, you know, under control. Um, after I had my oldest, it went from preeclampsia to eclampsia. And eclampsia is what develops soon after you have your baby. Um, blood pressure spiked. I ended up having seizures. Um, I literally thought it was going to take my life okay pregnancy is serious business um it's not just you get pregnant and you carry a baby for nine months you push your baby out there's pregnancy takes its toll on your body okay um pregnancy can exacerbate issues or things that you already have if you are you know diabetic it could potentially potentially i'm not saying it will but it could potentially make things a little more um intense for you you know that's why it's best if you are diabetic to make sure that you have your glucose and things like that under control before you decide to get pregnant make sure that you have a plan in place during pregnancy to control your diabetes okay if you have high blood pressure if you have any kind of pre-existing conditions before pregnancy it's very 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 crucial that you have some type of plan in place um you know you're you're making sure that your nutrition is what it needs to be you're making sure you're you know checking your glucose levels regularly you know you're doing trying to make sure you're in, in, in um improve your water intake like things that make sure that you're taking care of your body because pregnancy i love my girls to death but it's when you're pregnant it's like you got a parasite in there and they will drain and take pregnancy is hard on your kidneys it's hard it, it can you know is there's so much that goes into being pregnant that I don't think a lot of people think about. And also choosing your care team, the people who are gonna take care of you and help you through that, your healthcare provider, your doula if you decide to get one, or midwife if you decide to get one, whoever you you know want to be around as far as family, that is very, very, very important. I feel so horrible that she was alone when this happened and she passed away, her and her baby. You know, if someone was there, maybe they could have seen, you know, the sign, you know, something was going on. Um, it's just, we have to talk about these things. We have to talk about these things. We have to get, you know, light shed on situations such as, you know, eclampsia, preeclampsia, um, you know, and things like that because it, it happens so often. And it cracks me up. Like when I go and read and do like statistical research and stuff like that, how they say, oh, it's very rare. Oh, it only affects such and such numbers. Rare? No, my friend, this is very common. I don't understand. Rare amongst two. No, I, I, anyways, um, 
but I, I really I hate that situation that was so unfortunate um, like I said I don't I can't point fingers and you know things like that because I don't really know what you know her and her provider what type of relationship they had or if there was some type of you know plan in place as far as care but I can pretty much bet your bottom dollar probably was not probably it, it, it probably was not because if you all heard some of the things that I hear um, from clients and people in regards to how their providers treat them yeah um, mm -mm. and I, I feel like providers feel like or they get it twisted y'all work for the patient don't forget that they pay your salary or insurance but if it wasn't for them you know what I'm saying y'all wouldn't be paid like let's not forget that you know I feel like y'all need to be trying to really take people's concerns their pregnancies their lives all that stuff y'all need to be taking this stuff a lot more seriously than what y'all are taking it because that's what y'all get paid to do that's what y'all get paid to do um I had to hop on this story and kind of just put that out there. I hate that this happened to her. I'm praying for her family um, because it was a double loss. It was her and, and the baby. And it's just heartbreaking and it's saddening and it's happening way too often. And I'm just praying that, you know, we can make some changes in this world when it comes to women and them giving life. We've just got to do better. Um, I thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.